welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this awesome input animation where the placeholder text moves up to the top left of the input field. That way, whatever the user is typing, they'll still know what they're typing for, and you won't need to have that title outside of the input field. Now, of course, this will require some Velo, and as always, you can find that code on the Wixfix blog, or you can just use the link in the description. That'll take you straight to the blog post so you can use the code on your own site. But let's go ahead and start building it. The first thing I'm gonna do is just add a new page. We'll just make this blank. Next, let's go ahead and add an input field, just like this. I'm gonna expand it out just a little bit, make it a little bit taller. I'm gonna go ahead and center it up. Next, I want to edit the design. So for the fill, we wanna make sure that it's set to zero. We wanna set the border width to one and the opacity to probably something like 215. The corner radius, let's go ahead and set this to eight. The text placeholder color, let's actually set this to white. And we're gonna set the font size to 22. Then on hover, let's go ahead and remove that background fill again. For border, let's go ahead and set this to 25% and make sure that the width is two. And we'll do the same exact thing for focus. And it's probably a good idea that you do air as well, but we'll leave this one as is. Next, let's go ahead and select this input field. We'll click settings and right where it says placeholder text, let's go ahead and just remove that. The reason we're doing that is because the placeholder text that you saw in the, my example was actually just a text element. So let's go ahead and just add a text element. Let's name this one placeholder. And we can go ahead and position this inside of the input as if it was the placeholder text. Now let's go ahead and open up the coding area of the website. If you do not see this, then you may need to press dev mode and turn it on. But the first thing I want to do is actually rename this placeholder text. Instead of it being text one, let's just set it to placeholder. And for input, we'll go ahead and leave this one as input one. If you have multiple inputs in your form, which most likely you will, then you're probably gonna have an input one, two, three, four, and so on. So just make sure you do this step for each one of your inputs. But now that the placeholder text is named placeholder, we're actually gonna come over to a range and send it to back. That way when the user is trying to click on the input field, they're not clicking on the text and making it difficult for them. But now it's ready to code. The first thing I want to do is type in import. We're gonna add some curly brackets and type in timeline. On the outside of the brackets, we're gonna do from apostrophe Wix animations, then add a semicolon at the back. You're gonna notice that this text is grayed out a little bit, and that's because we don't have any functions down here that's calling to this API. So now let's go ahead and create some functions and tell the API what to do. The first thing I want to do is create a variable or a constant. So we're gonna do const. This variable is going to be for the placeholder. So let's just name it placeholder. It's going to equal dollar sign W apostrophe hashtag, and it's going to be the placeholder text. And now that we have our variable, let's go ahead and create an if else statement. If, and we're gonna add some parentheses, and we're gonna call the input one. If the input one's value, or the length of the value, is greater than zero, then we want something to happen. In this case, we don't want anything to happen, but now we can set up an else statement where something will happen for sure. So we're gonna do else. And in here, we're gonna do timeline. Underneath timeline, we're gonna press period and type add. We're gonna add some parentheses and we're gonna type in placeholder, comma, we're gonna add some curly brackets. I wanna say scale. And we're gonna add a colon and do one. Then we're gonna do a comma. We're gonna do y colon zero, comma, x colon zero, comma, duration, colon 400, comma, easing, 
colon, apostrophes, ease out circ. And on the outside of the curly brackets, we're gonna do another comma and a zero. Then on the outside of the parentheses, we're gonna press enter, we're gonna press dot play with some parentheses and a semicolon at the end. Basically what this if else statement is saying, if the input value is more than zero, nothing will happen. Otherwise, the placeholder text right here is normal size and is not moved. Now what we need to do is create an onClick function for this input so that it moves the placeholder. So underneath what we just created, we're gonna do dollar sign W and we're going to call, we're gonna say input one on click. I wanna add some parentheses in between the parentheses, but then the outside of the inner parentheses, we're going to add a equal sign, greater than sign, and then we're gonna add some curly brackets. And now it's time to create the function. Next, we want to create a variable for where the placeholder text is going to move once the button, once the input is clicked. So we're gonna do constant, we're gonna name it clicked. We're gonna equal, this is going to equal, we're gonna add some curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we're gonna do y colon, and we're gonna do like negative 18, comma, x colon negative 70, comma, scale, colon, let's do 0.5, comma. Duration, we want it to be the same as above. And easing, we also want to be the same as above. Okay, and outside the curly brackets, let's go ahead and add a semicolon. Press enter a couple times, and now we're gonna have another if else statement. So for this one, we're gonna do if, we're gonna add some parentheses, dollar sign W, if input one value dot length is greater than zero, then something will happen. In this case, we don't want anything to happen again, although we're gonna do another else statement. In this one, we're gonna do timeline dot add, and for this, inside the parentheses, we want to do placeholder, and we're gonna do clicked. And then we're also gonna add a comma zero. On the next line, let's do just dot play again. We'll add a semicolon at the end, and we're going to add semicolon right here as well. Now, if we preview the site, this is what we're gonna get. As you can see, we probably want the placeholder text to line up more with the input right here. So this is where a little bit of guess and check comes in. For this example, let's do like negative 80 for the X axis. And we're gonna press preview again. And we're gonna see it lines up just perfectly. But that is how you create the kind of placeholder text transition effect inside of Wix with just a little bit of Velo. Again, if you are interested in using this on your own site, you can find that on our website. The link will be in the description. But that's basically it for the video today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, please consider giving it a like and consider subscribing for more Wix content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all in the next one.